Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be going over some of the culture shocks that I've had ever since moving to the UK. If you're new here, my name is Nicole. I am Canadian originally, but I have lived in the UK for the last four years, England in specific, southwest of England in specific, because some of the things that I'm going to talk about in today's video are specific to due to the region of England that you're in. So if you are an Anglophile yourself and you like learning more about England, whether you are here in England or maybe you're still abroad, I would love if you press subscribe and join this little community. This month I'm talking all about being an Anglophile. We are going to bath, we are going and getting traditional foods, and so if you're an Anglophile, I think you'll enjoy it. So let's get into some of the culture shocks. Now the first thing isn't even on my list here. I just, I went into the kitchen to grab something and it just hit me. And this was the biggest culture shock when I first moved here, is that in a kitchen sink, number one, most kitchen sinks here are smaller than like a North American kitchen sink for whatever reason. And they keep a bowl, a plastic bowl in the sink. Now we don't keep a bowl in our sink anymore. I just didn't see the logic in it, but basically they would keep the washing up water and so you wouldn't have to constantly have the water running. So for me personally, I don't leave the water running the entire time I'm doing the dishes. I will soap and wash my plate and then I'll turn the water on. I'll rinse my plate and then I turn the water off and then I do the next one. Now, to me, it doesn't make sense to wash everything in the dirty water and then not rinse it off and then put it in the basket. And I have seen people do that. So before someone <laughs> says in the comments like, ooh, who would do that? I have seen British people do that <laughs> where they don't rinse it off. So with that being said, that was my first culture shock when moving here. Now the biggest, 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 biggest culture shock I have had since moving here is, I don't know if this is a British thing or if it's mainly an English thing, but they don't say what they mean at all and it's like I think it's a part of their conservativeness and it is a part of their politeness like I think Canadians are polite but Canadians are also to the point whereas Brits aren't like that at all so for example if I say to my husband he is English he's from Bristol he's as Bristolian as I come I'll say to him hey do you want to order some pizza tonight he'll be like yeah and then I'll get on the website, I'll have the website up on the computer, I'll have everything in the basket to check out, and then I'll ask him, well, what do you want on your pizza? And he'll be like, mm. And then, now, after being here for four years, I'll know by that, mm, that he doesn't actually want pizza. <laughs> and you might think, oh, that's just your husband? No. It is not. <laughs> and so it took me a really long time to learn to speak British, as I like to call it, because they don't say what they mean because they never want to cause tension. And so you kind of have to look at someone's behavior at what the true answer is, as opposed to asking them straight out. It's like you can't, there's no direct approach here. Otherwise you might seem like too much. Now, the third culture shock, we haven't had to experience this just yet, but I've heard stories, and as we are in a season of trying to grow our family, you can't take kids out of school here. So for example, if my little brother, I have a almost 12 year old little brother in Canada, if his mom wants to bring him over here tomorrow, she can bring him over tomorrow. It's as simple as that. Whereas here, if you take your kids out of school in the school year, you can be fined for taking them out of school. And Paul told me a story, my husband told me a story, where his mom took him out of school, and he, I think he had to go to a doctor appointment or a dentist appointment, and cops driving by said, ma'am, why have you, like, shouldn't he be in school? And they had to explain where he was going. And I just think that's absolutely crazy. It's for the best. Obviously, because kids, their education should come first, but yeah, I, I just, I find that absolutely crazy, especially if you had a kid where they were caught up with everything and you felt like you could take them away for a bit. That's wild. But I will also say here, I do believe that they have more holiday time or vacation time than they do in North America. 
So here they have something called half term and I still get confused on when the dates of half term is, but think of it exactly like what it sounds like. It's half of the term. So you know you have your fall semester, then your winter semester, and then your spring semester in North America? Well, during that semester at the halfway point, they have something called half term and they have a whole week off. And so I think that that's a lot nicer and it gets to break up the school holidays in a better way than having a two and a half month holiday where you've got to find childcare, your kids end up getting bored and they end up forgetting everything that they've learned in school the previous year. So culture shocks. <laughs> the next culture shock that I had when moving here is the fridge. The fridge is so small and if you want a bigger fridge, you have to request a American fridge. And most of the fridges here don't have like, you know how you get the water to come out of your fridge or the ice to come out of your fridge? No, like it is very rare that you'll see a household with that, even if they have an American fridge. And you might be thinking like, ooh, how does that bear any grievance on your life? Well, to be honest, I find the fridges so small here that you can't really do a full grocery shop and you can't buy like, for example, like if I go to Costco and get stuff in bulk, I don't have anywhere to put it in my fridge and I can't freeze it because there's no freezer space and then there's no space in the house to get a cube freezer or you know a static you know longer freezer and so I'm someone who I like to batch cook and I can't do that and that does play part in my day-to-day -day that I've had to restructure how I cook and how I like provide for the home so yeah, it does actually play some type of role <laughs> in my day to day. Okay, so the next thing that it was a culture shock, but I get it now, is that no one drives when it snows. And so I heard this from well before I moved over here, is that they get very little snow and when it does snow, everything grounds to a halt. But hear me out. The minute that I started to comprehend this in a different manner was there was one day when my dogs first moved over here and I was walking my dog Charlie to the vet and I slipped on some leaves and that were just wet and I was like if this is how slippery the sidewalk is here when it's just raining and there's leaves I couldn't imagine what it would be like with ice and the other thing is is that the snow here it's more wet and it's more damp. I think if you are watching this and you're either from the East Coast of America or Canada, it's probably more like the snow that you're used to there, but it is in minimal amounts. The other thing that I understand is that they don't have winter tires. So would you go driving on snow in your summer tires? Probably not. So it is bizarre that the whole country comes to a standstill when it does snow, but I kind of get it. The next thing that was a huge culture shock here is pub culture. I kind of had a understanding because I've mentioned in another video, my previous partner is from England. And so I, I got to observe that in him when we were together. But now coming here to the UK, although Paul rarely ever goes to the pub, the first few years of me being here, he did. And so the, a lot of culture revolves around the pub here, especially on a Sunday if you're going for a pub roast and then a walk afterwards. Which brings me to the next point, roast culture. I could probably count on one hand how many roasts I had in my life back in Canada. And I still don't think I've had a proper, proper one here yet. And everywhere does it a little bit different, but it is such a culture here to go to a pub on Sunday. Some people like, they do not miss the pub on Sunday, full stop. And then they'll go for a walk afterwards to almost like walk it all off, which is crazy because there's not that much like parks or green spaces in most of the cities here, but rain or shine, you will see people go for their walk after a roast on a Sunday. And it's usually like a few hours long of a walk. The next thing that you'll have to get used to if you move over here, <laughs> you'll have a bit of culture shock with is Nothing, like none of your favorite TV shows, if they were made in America, will get released over here first. And so you think, how is that going to play a part on my day-to-day -day life? Well, let me tell you, it plays a part on your day-to-day -day life because say it's your favorite show and it's the grand finale and it came out in the nighttime and then you've got to go to work first thing in the morning. 
Well, you then have to stay off social media. You then have to not turn on the radio or the TV or anything like that because they'll start talking about the finale. And so a lot, you, you deal with a lot of spoilers over here. So whether that is a TV show or whether it's like a sporting event, it's something that you'll have to get used to because you always get the update of what happened after the fact. So our second last culture shock that we're gonna talk about today is bus stop priority. Now, if you saw one of the previous videos where I'm talking about words that I may or may not use now that I have lived over here for a few years, I talk about queuing and British people love a lineup. <laughs> so one of the things that I had to learn when I moved over here was when you get to a bus stop, there is an order of precedence as per who gets on the bus first. Now you might be thinking, that's just manners. You wouldn't barge in front of somebody if you were the last person to get to the bus stop. Totally. But they take it to another level here. So say the bus comes and the bus stops right in front of you and it's an empty bus. Like everybody will get on this bus without a doubt. That person will still step away and then let the appropriate person get onto the bus and everybody at that bus stop will like adhere to the order that people got to that bus stop at. And sometimes it just makes me laugh because I'm like, they'll be like, no, you go, no, you go. And I'm like, let's just get on the bus because there's more than enough space to get us all on the bus. And on the opposite end of this, this is how I learned about this bus stop order. I, this one time, was just being polite and I was just like, oh, you can go ahead, you can go ahead, you can go ahead. And like, if you, if you say like, go ahead, the person won't be like, oh no, I couldn't possibly, like they wouldn't do that. But I thought, well, surely we're all gonna get on the bus cause we're all at this bus stop. Would you believe the bus driver was like, no, we're too full and left me close the doors on just me at the bus stop and I had just let everybody go. So now your girl loves the precedence. I make sure that everything is ready and yeah. British people love a lineup or a queue, sorry. <laughs> okay, so the last culture shot that you might have to get used to when you move here is backing into a space with your car. So I come from North America, we know this. There's big roads. I will drive nose first into a stall when I'm driving. Here, I think it comes from the fact that, you know, alleyways and stuff are so narrow and maybe there's not enough space to turn around. Most people back into things. And, but then I find it's become such a part of culture that most people back into things, even if they could easily nose into it. They'll only nose into it if there is a stall in front of it that they can pull into the next stall so they can easily drive away. And yeah, if you're not good at backing up down an alley the way that I'm not good at backing up down an alley, it's gonna be a culture shock for you. Anyways, my friends, that is it for this video. I hope you've been learning all about being an Anglophile, what qualifies as making you as one, and maybe learning a bit about the UK or England in specific. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I'm going to see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.